We had Trent Horn on recently, and he so he he was challenging me because I tend to push the moon landing is nonsense thing as a goof a little bit sometimes. And I know you've done this something similar. Yeah, yeah. And he he tried telling me that uh as Catholics, we have a responsibility to not make ourselves look silly and this and that. And I and I pushed back on him and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, you're you you believe in evolution. <laughs> like, and to <laughs> me, that's preposterous. I'm like, how can you say me not believing the moon landing is an right. equivalent to that? So he he tried to put this responsibility, and I don't understand that. I, I mean, I get that you have a big following, but the idea that you can't say over the last 10 years, my my understanding of what a narrative is from the government has completely been shattered. I'm assuming you're in the similar boat to me, right? Definitely. Definitely. Right. Like, like, I don't know. I don't know what I believe about 9-11 anymore. I don't know what I believe about the moon landing. They have completely destroyed my trust to the point where I'm questioning things that I never questioned before. Right. So I, I, I so for, for him to give me a little bit of nonsense on that, I, I started pushing back with evolution because we had, um, uh, Hugh uh we had Hugh Owen on who I yeah. never spoke to before. And he really challenged my, because I always just assumed the, the earth was millions of years old. And he kind of really threw some challenges up. So then I saw Graham Hancock on Joe Rogan again the other day. Okay, and I haven't seen it. So Graham Hancock goes well, I've on. Seen the, I've seen the first appearance, and I've watched Graham uh, Hancock's documentary on Netflix. And which, I'm familiar with him. I think it's interesting. It is interesting because he goes in and starts talking about how archaeology has a narrative that they're trying to protect mm -hmm. and if you try to challenge that narrative you get pushback and they're accusing graham hancock of being a racist and all these things mm -hmm. now he doesn't make the connection that the narrative they're trying to protect is th that they can't let the biblical creation narrative stand right so they have a timeline of things happened in this order and civilization was built like this. We went from hunter gatherers to this, to this, to this, to this. And this is the, uh, this is the gradual escalation and anything that derived like uh, goes off of that narrative, they will push back very hard on. So he kind of just confirms that even more for me about, about the biblical creation story. Yeah. Where, where, where do you stand on it? Do you, do you have a hard, have no, a hard position? You, you listen to the, the, to him on Joe Rogan, especially if you listen to him on the Netflix series. And it's basically goes like this. Well, there was this ancient advanced civilization that was far more advanced than we were. And they were able to accomplish these, you know, architectural marvels and move all these things and build all these things and align things with like the constellations and the seasons and the stars and all that. And then there was this big flood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after the flood, you know, people didn't know what to do. And there were these messenger prophet people. <laughs> and they kind of guided the people into the truth because they were so lost, you know. And and it's like, I've, I've heard this story before <laughs> it's it was like, in Genesis. It's actually our story. And the very fact that they will not, that there's an ancient civilization that's advanced that gets wiped out by a flood, right? Um, and that we can somehow, you know, we've had a hard time digging back into that lost excellence is the story of Genesis. And it's just... It's so amazing that you watch the entire thing and not once is there ever a reference to Genesis. <laughs> not once. Yeah, because he won't touch. He won't. So even he has his own narrative that he's trying to not go near, right? right. He he wants to construct his own narrative that no 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 there was these there was a civilization that existed, but we're not going to we're not going to we're not going to acknowledge that there's actually a story that says there was a civilization and then there was a flood and then a new civilization <laughs> yeah. popped up. It's, it's really wild that people get stuck in there. So that, that's all, that's all that he, the, the past few months have really been just me challenging my presuppositions about trusting anything from even the science community, especially after what they did to us with COVID uh, what they do with the, the trans issue where I'm supposed to believe the same person telling me a guy in a dress is a girl. I'm right. supposed to trust him on how we discover how old dinosaurs are and all that. I just don't trust any of it anymore. No. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and, and think about it this way, TV and what we call online media, which is what we're doing right now. 
I mean, yes, TV started, you know, got popular in the 50s and in the 60s. But this whole idea of like mass media that like Johnny Carson gets on the camera and talks to millions of people or that hundreds of millions of people watch the same football game and this whole thing, like, I think Trent Horn's a great guy and he's done a lot of good. He's very smart and all that. But it's like, should we as humans have maybe just like a 100 year moratorium like of suspicion yeah. that perhaps someone is using this mega pandora box to deceive the entire planet i'm not saying everything that comes off on social media or on tv is fake but you have to realize there's been some really evil people in the world who have tried to deceive people and now there's this mechanism by which they can televise all kinds of things I mean, you know, have you seen the Joe Rogan clips where he's showing the um, atomic bomb explosions of those are all yeah, fake. They're all fake. It's crazy. Fake. They, they show the truck there one minute and it's not there the next yeah. minute. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so so we know that that governments have used studios and they have used dissimulation and they have tricked the population. And so, you know, I think for for anyone who's an intellectual and who's smart to question, especially if it comes from like. I don't know, President Nixon or government officials after we lived through COVID, I don't think that makes you like kooky, bad person, not intellectual, not professional. I mean, we're learning as we go year by year that all of these conspiracy theories, that a mm -hmm. lot of these things are true. All this stuff is yeah. legit. Yeah. You I, know? Mean, okay. I was going to say every, almost every military conflict we've been in since Korea, we've we found have been, has been some sort of false flag. I mean, Gulf of Tonkin has been proved to be to have been staged. Um, you know, obviously Iraq, two thousand three. I mean, it's everything. All, all these things, yeah. I th yeah. I think Trent's main main point is, he, so he he's looking at it like you might dissuade an atheist or a Protestant from considering Catholicism because they'll think we're kooks. But I don't think he realizes how many Protestants think evolution is nonsense and they're yeah. young earth creationists and how many of them have been disaffected by the things that have come down through our government over the past 10 years too and i i just think there's different people are different and i think we all sometimes people get audience captured where they they see a certain comment in their feed and they assume everyone thinks that way. So right. um, I had I'm friends with uh, somebody that works for Trent and they would show me comments that would say stuff like uh, I almost became a set of a contest because of Taylor Marshall. And I would send him back comments saying if it wasn't for Taylor Marshall, I wouldn't be Catholic today because there are different right. people find have different tastes and need different things. And that's why I don't think there is this grand responsibility on you. I think your only responsibility is to actually say the truth to what you what you're what you're seeing yeah i mean we could just like you said you can just flip the tables and say okay well you're promoting evolution that's going to lead people to read genesis in a non-theological way and they're going to lose their faith yeah you're making people i mean all of the like you said all of, there's so many different people so many different perspectives i think i hope i pray to god that as i study catholicism and as i speak about it that I'm on point and I'm tar on target. I hope that I am never ever off in misleading people. And if I am, I need to repent and and fix that, change that publicly. But I mean, for for Catholic brothers in the space to be like, you know, knocking each other off or coming after each other over like super peripheral things. Yeah, we got it. We can't do that. Like, I think that's more scandalous to Protestants than yeah. any anything else, you know, whether you believe the vaccine what? or I mean, whatever, you know, I think we just, you know, let's let's keep things focused on the faith, you know, on the truth. That's what we're doing in this space. So what let's a, just let's just keep on keeping our lane and keep on it. One of the coolest things I saw was you bumped into Matt Frad when you were in Lords, and you guys took a picture together. Yeah. And it's like people think we're so different but it really like i hate tribalism i really do like right. i i think anybody that believes the orthodox faith and is struggling going through what we're going through right now like you're my catholic brother man you may have some differing opinions on certain things right now but i know you're struggling to handle i mean i i, I we're we're in a bananas time right now 
that right. like I, I don't know what is going to come of this October meeting we just had. But it doesn't fit. I mean, everybody, you have two different sides saying two different things. One side is saying, oh, look, everything uh, they said, they didn't get their 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 agenda through with the LGBT stuff and the women pre stuff. But to me, I see it as that whole response to the dubia before the thing even started laid enough shaky groundwork that they don't need to do anything with that synod at that point. Like that caused an earthquake. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, they let's basically use the example. Let's say you're a, a, an SSA, same sex attracted adult man who's struggling with this. You're Catholic. You read this. You you end up going to a Jesuit parish, you know, and you say, hey, I've struggled with this. But I just read this thing. The, I read the dubia responses. And then, like, yeah, I mean, that's that's what the pope responded with. I mean, they are affirmed whether some document with gilded ink comes out or whatever. We, we live in an age of mass media and these things do make a huge impact in, in the lives of people. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very uncomfortable position to be a lay person and say, well, this has always been wrong. It's in the, wrong in the Bible. It's wrong in natural law. It's wrong in tradition. I have 30 Pope quotes. Yeah, but Pope Francis says it's a very difficult question to set to, to say. Well, I'm going to go with the tradition, and like, well, you think you know better than the Pope? That's a very uncomfortable position. Yeah, right. But mm -hmm. so many of us are in that situation, um, and uh, yeah, it's just it is uncomfortable. There's nothing. There's no way to make it go away right now. I think there will be a resolution in the future, but right now we just sort of live in this tension. And especially raising children and having families and trying to evangelize our family members and bring them to the church. That, that, that tension right there, I think, is the hardest thing about being a 